I want to introduce a marriage testimony that will be showed very shortly. This particular marriage testimony is definitely one of the very most remarkable marriage testimonies that I have ever seen, that I've ever heard, and my wife and I, we got to be personally involved in this marriage testimony. So I want you to know this, that this is this is very a very, very outstanding testimony. Tell somebody, have somebody watch this with you. Anybody that's going through any kind of a marriage trial, etc. Have them watch this video. I'm telling you, you will find that this is very, very, very uncommon. What will be said in this video. Very powerful. Um, it is a testimony of... Um, success in people that were married, divorced, and then got back together again. So be prepared for this testimony and enjoy it. Thank you. The revelation knowledge that comes from heaven is what tingles our hearts and it attracts us. We, When you hear something, when... When you're hungry for God, if you're not hungry for God, then revelation goes right over your head. You don't even hear it. But Randy's going... You need to blow that horn loud. Randy's going, I hear revelation. I want to hear it again. I remember that trip we took to your anniversary. He hands me the Bible, his Bible, and he says... And he... He made me get open Philippians um, 4.19. And it said, My God will supply all your needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And he said, Read that to me 25 times. And I'm in the back seat. And I, I, he, I didn't tell him this. I didn't tell either one of you that. Motion sickness, like trying to read in, in a back seat for me was almost impossible. And, and, and yet he wanted me to read that to him. So I had to hopefully memorize it really good and just keep saying it right without screwing it up. And just say it over and over and over and over and over again. Because he wanted to be reminded sure. that he was going to have his needs met no matter what. I don't know what he was believing for at the time, but whatever it was, he wanted to be reminded that his God would meet his needs according to his riches and glory. This is a principle that he got by nature from God because that same thing is in God that's why God set up the angels to say holy 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come you can read that in the Bible that, that very saying I might have butchered it a little but that's if you read it it's in the Bible what they say and it reminds him who he is he does not want to forget who he is he needs to know Hey, I'm the head honcho here. I'm the guy. Like, Satan tried to become head honcho. Yeah. And Satan didn't have the wherewithal to, to pull it off. Now, he thought he did. Satan wouldn't have made that calculated attack unless he thought he was going to pull it off. He thought he was going to pull that off. He got a third of the angels to go with him. I don't know what would have happened if he would have gotten 100%. Of the angels to go with them. God will never know. We'll never know. But God may have had to find a wipe out all them angels. Oh well. But the fact <laughs> is, God has to remember who He is. He's God, and He's love, and He can't just get up and have a conniption fit and just throw planets all around. <laughs> that just destroy the earth. He can't do that. Although, I get the idea that at one time in his being, he may have had that in him to do that. But he don't have that no more. He's dealt with that, and it's not part of him. He's not who he is. And he makes sure that he remembers who he is, and he never goes that other side 
In fact, the very reason, people are going to like this, the very reason you and I were born was to punish God's enemy, Satan. That's why we were born. To punish God's enemy, Satan. Which tool? Because he told us, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay, that he that the people who come against us, he said, Don't come against the people that come against you. I'll take care of that. Well, when he when Satan tried to overthrow heaven, God's going. Like lightning, I saw Satan fall to the earth. And how long ago, from the time Satan hit the earth until the time Adam was created, how much time went by? People don't know. It could be millions of years. Nobody really knows. They all say, the science says the earth's been here for a long time. Mm -hmm. But they can't, nobody can prove to me that man's been here more than approximately 6,000 years. But Satan was crawling around down here. Why? Because God was going to desire design a plan. God was going to design a plan. God's going, all right, we're, we're going to fix this. Marilyn Hickey said that concerning Satan being thrown out of heaven, I'm going to inject this, and then we're going to we're not going to talk about it. We're going to just go on. But because it's Marilyn, I very highly respect her. Yeah. She said that when God threw the devil out of heaven. We don't know the exact word. Was it thrown? Was it slingshotted? Was it shot out of the cannon? Well, we saw him like lightning. We saw him like lightning. Okay, I was coming to that. That's fast. Yeah. yeah. So if somebody comes out of heaven at 186,000 miles per second, and that, like lightning, may have just been just a phrase. It might not have been that speed. It might have been higher. Yeah, it could but, have. Okay, enough of that. But, she said that when he was fired out of heaven, and she had some kind of something to back this up, and I don't remember what it was, she said he hit the earth so hard, and she said that's why the earth, it used to be oh, on yeah. its axis straight up and down, and now it's off what, like five right. degrees? Right. She said that's why that is. I could buy that. And then she just, she didn't want to beat it up. She just left it there. Anyway, I can buy corn, that. Corn. I can, you know, there's other, I can buy that. There's also lots of stuff that, that, that went on. But anyways, um, we were put here on this earth to, remember, to torture the devil. Remember the demons came up to Jesus and said, Are you here to torture us, Jesus, son of the living God, before the time? No. He wasn't here to torture him before the time. The time was, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost, and I'm going to make a whole bunch of little Jesuses throughout the earth, and together they're going to torture him. They're going to work you over. They're going to Resist work you over. Resist the devil, and he shall flee from you in stock terror. Terrorize him. Yes. So we're going to have a whole... That's what the copy of, of Terrorist Day is. It roots back. It's an imitation. It's an imitation of what should be. We are going to, be, there's going to be a whole bunch of Holy Ghost filled little Jesus. Once you're filled with the Holy Ghost and full of the Word, God is now mobile. That's right. And all these little gods throughout the earth are going to torture him. And the Bible said Jesus' mission was that he might come to destroy the works of the devil. That word destroy also means undo yeah. the works of the devil. That's when we go around healing the sick raising the dead, uh, casting out devils. We're undoing the works of the devil. That's undoing it. Amen. And we're called to undo the works of the devil, not called to sit back and you know, do nothing and be intimidated by... It's time that, that the... Like, when I was just a young punk kid, I read the scripture that said... I had somebody... I heard somebody saying... Oh, Lord, we pray for boldness. We're praying for boldness. Praying for boldness. The righteous are as bold. And I read that scripture. It said the righteous are as bold as a lion. And then I read in Ephesians, it said, In him we have boldness. And let us come boldly to the throne of grace. And I just said, well, then, bless God, I'm bold. That's right. 
And I started acting like I was bull. I already got it. I went down with John Lepore and his band down to Toronto, and they were having a oh, uh, a concert <clears throat> at one of the Christian coffee houses or something, and they were putting on, actually, they were, they were at a church, and they were putting on a special uh, food thing and a concert, food and a concert. And we had to go out that afternoon and, and hand out flyers and, and give flyers. And I'm going down this one street, and there's this, like, sidewalk alley going into this house. And somebody said to me, somebody warned us when we went out. They said, just skip that. Don't go down there. They said, you could die, you could die going down there. That's, a, that's some kind of a nut house. And the people down there are crazy. And don't be passing out flyers down there. Well, you know what I did? <laughs> I, everybody red, else red flag in front of a bull. Everybody else stayed back, and I just said, "I ain't. <laughs> let's have a piece. let's go. Let's here." And I started hand, all the nut nut you nuts here. You need this. Are you nuts here. You need hey, this. You're you're qualified. Qualified. Right here. Here, and I just started giving it to as many people as it would would take it. Because I'm bold. Because the word says I'm bold, not for any other reason. He's given his angels charge over you. Your I was at a wife. drug dealer's house, and his wife pointed over at the uh, the fireplace mantle. This was when you were before you were saved. And she says, uh, "You know, he's pointing before at her husband." She married. goes, "He's certified," which everybody knew that phrase meant. He's certifiably on paper nuts. Like here's his government uh, qualifications. She goes, "Oh, he's got his papers." And everybody's looking around. She goes, "Yeah." She reaches over on the mantle. Like she had an old marriage license or something, and pulled it off there and showed everybody, passed it around the room. He was certified nut. I didn't need to say that, but anyway, go on. <laughs> Just, I guess, to try to put fear into people. Don't be afraid. Fear not. But where does that boldness come from? It, the Bible says, in him we have boldness. So the boldness didn't come from my, I was never like that before I was saved. And even after I got saved, well, I guess I started, the, the boldness started to show up after I got saved. I just, and then I started acting on it. And when you act on something that's, that's of God, you get, like, familiar with it, and you get more deeper into it. The more you act on it, the more it becomes part of you. And before long, you get to the place, like, we were down in, in Detroit, there wasn't a white person to be seen anywhere near us. And she stands out. <laughs> and, so, and so we're walking around and... You mean the white lady? <laughs> we're just walking around and just being friendly to everybody. And just being a blessing to everybody. I, I street evangelized for four months out in Calgary. and got all kinds of people saved just coming up to them and, and, and ministering to them. But there was no fear. No fear. None. If, you, if you're going to have fear, fear, what's, like I heard a good teaching about fear. Like, fear is about worrying about your own life, losing your own life. And I thought, I already did that. I already lost my own life. There's nothing left of my life. What's there to be afraid of? It's no longer I that live it, but Christ that lives in me. Why be afraid? I already died. You can't kill a dead man. I, Remember a friend of ours, friend of ours, John Levac, there was a rumor going around that he had died, eh? And yeah, I and I, I told him about it, eh? And he started laughing and goes, ho 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 I don't die easy. <laughs> I, I, that just blessed me. I just I just got blessed and I thought, yeah, that's right. We're full of God. We don't roll over and die. We're full of God. We don't die. So anyways. We're getting to the point now where um, people want to know, what is it you did? And I said, well, I got consistent. I did things over, worship God. I stayed in my, I had a confession sheet over my wife. I said that over and over again. I, I worship God. I, 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 like I turned to the devil and I just absolutely laid into him with the word. I spoke the word, jabbed him with the sword of the spirit. I kept my full armor on and just worshiped God. And I got stronger and stronger every day. The stronger, you ever hear Norval Hayes? He goes, 
and, and he goes, the, the longer you do it, the stronger you get. The longer you do it, the stronger you get. The longer you do it, the stronger you get. The longer you do it, the stronger you get, 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 get. <laughs> and then casting the devil out, like a spirit out, you know. And this is the thing. When you get consistent, like in Luke 18, read Luke 18, 1 to 8. When you get consistent like that, you're too much for the devil to handle. I don't care who you are out there. You say, oh, I wish I had that kind of faith and boldness that, that, that Brother Jim Davies has got. I wish I had that. You do have it. Use it. That's right. You have it. Just start using it, and it grows. It grows, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows, and it grows. And you just keep using it, and it keeps growing. And it gets to the point where you become more than the devil can handle. And so I'm praying, I'm every day I'm doing this, and I'm not counting the days. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm, I'm coming along, and, and I'm, the, the devil starts talking to me. And he's going, he's going, uh, people are sleeping with your wife. Hey, it's going through my mind. Ah, there's, she's out there. You know, she's got this man she's married to, and then she's got this other guy on the side, and she's sleeping with him, and there's other people who knows who's sleeping with her, you know, and they're just mocking you. You're calling her your wife, and, and everybody's sleeping with your wife. They're sleeping with your wife. This is a little stupid little goof telling me this in my brain, eh? And I'm, I'm sitting there, and while, I, while that, the Holy Ghost is generating inside of me. Bimlach. Bimlach was going to sleep with Sarah. And God came to Abimelech and said, You're but a dead man because the man you're the woman you're about to sleep with is my friend Abraham's wife. And Abimelech's going. I didn't know. I didn't know. Okay, repeat that. Repeat that story. Abraham. God comes to Abimelech. King. King Abimelech. No. I want you to remember something about a king. The king is the king. He's the law of the land. If the king says, you're sleeping with me tonight, that's the law. That's the law. There's no other way around it. That's the law. If the king says it, if you don't honor the king, what's the, what's the end result? Off with the head. The king said, Sarah's sleeping tonight with me. And we're going to have love making with and a a a God came to Abimelech and okay, said, I want to slow that down. And God came to Abimelech, right? Yeah. Okay, I want you to say it like that really slow and then just come. And God uh -huh. came to Abimelech. And said, Thou art but a dead man. Mm -hmm. Because the man the woman you're about to sleep with is my friend Abraham's wife. <laughs> and I heard that in my spirit, and I said, No man sleep with my wife. Ever again, or he will die. And then I went, because of religiosity, I went, oh boy, I can't believe I said that. That was an Elijah moment. Yeah. That was an Elijah moment right there. That Elijah's was... come forth. Come forth, Elijah's. We've been calling you for months. Come forth. Right. I wasn't ready for it. <clears throat> and I said, God, I can't believe I said that. And the Lord said, Son, you never said it. I said it. I went, oh, oh. And then afterwards, when she came back to me, this is what she had to say to us. Yeah, all of a sudden, I am uh, started to, I, you know, going to church, and the other man wasn't coming as much. And, and uh, you know, I said I was praying for him and everything, and then, then I read, I pulled out Song of Solomon. I thought, oh, I'll put some 
some crackers and cheese and some grape juice and make a little dish and put on some lingerie and like I'm thinking I'm seducing my husband and with the word of God I mean I prayed oh God for your presence I mean you know anyway I do all that and the other man uh, says nah I can't I can't I don't know you go into detail. Yeah, he goes, you I, don't know, I don't know what's because going on. Because they know, they, they talk that way around the kitchen table. Okay. So he, he says, just, he says, he couldn't, he couldn't get an erection, he couldn't, he said, I don't know what's going on, I don't know, but no, not tonight. And it was like. They hadn't hmm. invented Viagra. Yeah, I didn't understand that because I'd never experienced no before. So then I got really dumb <laughs> and I thought, I'll drive out. And visit someone and uh, on the reserve and I'll have sex with them and I prayed in tongues all the way there all the way there praying in tongues it was like my flesh was good my flesh was already deter determined my flesh is gonna do what my flesh wants to do but my spirit this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong but I prayed in tongues praying in tongues I didn't know what else to do pray in tongues all the way there I get there I open the door and the other man is at the end uh, against the kitchen and he backs up, backs up against the kitchen covers and he said, get away from me. He says, you got God all over you and I don't want to die. And this I'm, is a different guy. This wasn't the guy you were married to. This no, it's was, a different guy. Yeah, different, different guy. guy. It says that. And it was like, what? What? And I thought, oh my gosh. I did not know he did. He's said that those words or God God said those words so I drive all the way home and I'm going okay this is it God what is going on here I've been praying and I'm screwing up and what's going on with my husband I want to know what's going on what is what do you want from me God and I got really mad at God. I said, that's it. I'm going on a fast. I'm fasting and praying until you speak to me and show me what's going on. And I mean, I just started, I, what is it, the next morning? I, anyway, I did all that. I started, started the fast. My phone rings. And it's a girl from the church. And I did not know behind the scenes. She was yeah, praying for our marriage to be restored. I didn't know any of that. I just met her because I'm just coming back to the Lord. And she, the phone rings. Normally, I don't answer the phone when I'm fasting. I want to, I'm, I'm, I got to hear from God. But I pick up the phone. She says, what are you doing? I said, I'm fasting. I need some answers. And she said, what about? And I said, my husband. It's about my husband. And she said, which one? And I was like, which one, all them years in my mind, us being separated, divorced, it was over. God understands. It's God I'm at peace now with this other man, you know. I totally, not for a second, thought of him as my husband. I was over. Seven years, eight months, done. I just went, oh my God, oh my God, which one? I hung up the phone. I had the Bible on my lap. It fell on the floor and it opened up. It opened up to Romans 7 3. Romans 7 3. I mean, those thought that scripture out of all, you know, two pages there, just screaming, look at me, look at me, look at me. I see that and I went, it says, if a wife be married to another man while her husband liveth, she would be called an adulterous woman. And I know that when I got the revelation, the, he liveth. Many people are remarried and their husbands or whatever, you know. But that meant, it means while the covenant is alive. While he keeps the covenant alive. While he keeps the covenant alive. If I go married to another man, which I was, I was an adult. God, this is God. God himself calling me this. Showing me. And it was like, oh my God. 
I got up, sat up, and all of a sudden it was creepy. I felt like I was in somebody else's house, sitting on someone else's stuff. I get to the edge of the chair, I look out, I see the jag, and it's like, oh, I felt like a whore. I felt like completely filth. And it was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I knew, I knew it was over. I got to go back to gym. Oh my gosh. And you know, it was within like a couple hours, Patty shows up with the girl at my house, sitting at the kitchen table and they're looking going, so what are you going to do? I said, I'm leaving. I'm going back to gym. And it was, but it said, I, I can't just jump from, I don't even know him anymore. I dated him 10 months, married 15 months, been gone for seven years and eight months. It wasn't like I was going to jump from bed to bed. It was like, uh, even though I was doing that, but it was like, I just can't act like everything's rosy with Jim. And then the other girl says, well, you can just stay with me for a while. And it was like, God made the escape. When the word says he always makes a way of escape, just like that, man. It was like, oh my gosh. I'm doing it. And Patty's like, when? I said, now I'm doing it. It's done. I'm a, I'm no way. I got the revelation. I was an adulterous woman. I repent, God. I repent. So they leave. So wouldn't you want your spouse to wake up tomorrow morning feeling that they have to return to you because God told them to? That there's no other way around it. Wouldn't you want that? Like, wouldn't like, wouldn't you want that? Because there's there's many people out there that your husband or wife has just left you, and your husband or wife is all confused and all messed up, and mixed up, and you've kept the covenant alive, and you're the only hope because. They've obviously not kept it alive. Because once two people let it go, it's gone. There's no need trying to go back and fix, repair stuff that's already done. It's done. God forgives us. There's no, there's no need to worry about that. But for those of you that are, you know, are abandoned and you're by yourself because your husband or wife just left you, and you know you have a covenant, Wouldn't you want God to show up and visit your spouse like he did for her? Why did he show up like that for her? Because he rearranged her circumstances. In her life, it was important for her to have sex. That was very important at 31 years old. That was important to her. And all of a sudden, the man she was married to couldn't get an erection. The fellow that was younger than her that had no problems, 20-year-old dude that was in his 20s, he had no problems having a go in the sack with her. He, she's, he says, oh, man, I don't want to die. Get away from me. I don't want to die. I see God all over you. Well, how many times has somebody said that today? That they saw God all over. Oh, how many times has a pretty woman showed up at somebody's door today and they said, get out of here. I see God all over you. That just doesn't, that's just not your everyday they occurrence. they could hear the voice of God louder than they could hear the voice of their pecker. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That alone is a testimony. That's a loud voice, too, for most guys. Oh. <laughs> so, to think about this, she's got this this willingness, this, this I, I've heard Patty talk this side of that when she was there. And, and Patty's almost like, you're going to go now? Like, Patty's like, whoa, like that's quick. Like, you're not going to sleep on it or anything? Like, you're going to go, you know, she was. I heard from God, I'm not going to play around with that. I'm going to obey instantly, so fast. I hadn't even called him yet. I knew what I was going to do. I even spoke the words out to Patty. And I want to say something. I want to interject something here. This is all happening on May the 1st of mm -hmm. 1991. Mm -hmm. And she did call me at 6 p.m. that night. 
That morning at 9 a.m., the devil tried to kill me. At 9 a.m., the, de tr the devil tried to take me off this planet. I was in my bathroom, and all of a sudden, I was sitting there, and all of a sudden, the lighting started to go dimmer. The, the hearing started to go weaker. Somebody was turning down the dial of my life. My life was being reduced to, to die. I almost died four or five times. I, I know all the similarities that I had in all the different times that I almost died. My spirit was coming out of my body, and I was losing control of my body. I was losing control. As a spirit, if a spirit comes out of a person's body, they lose control of that body. So what is it? This screams. What is it that is so important? That God has for you to do. For you to have come through this multitude of stuff that you've come through. He's going to abolish divorce off the earth from the body of Christ. That's what it is. It's not That's what it is. About us. All about of this. All, all of this. this. All of this history is it's God's it doing. Is so off the it's charts. God's doing because he's going to abolish divorce out of the body of Christ. And it don't matter for those of people who've been divorced two, three, four times. It don't matter. They can get in there and be a, a soldier for that and say, you know, I got duped, but not no more. And right. this, and they can fight for this just the same way as anyone else can. Because you know what? Most people, most people today have had a divorce. And you, you think God does not love those people? He loves those people with every fiber of his being. And it's not necessarily their fault, fault that they got divorced. They got tricked or hoodwinked or in a bad situation. And God wants to repair and restore. Doesn't mean everybody has to, you know, leave their, their current wife or husband and go back to something. That's not, no. In fact, in many times, that's worse. Just stay with the one you're with. And make it a covenant and keep it forever. Make it forever. We've all heard so much about the nails in Jesus' wrists and his feet. Yeah. Well, this testimony is is the is the biggest nail in the devil's coffin. That's what this testimony is. This is this is so big. This it's roaring out of my spirit. You're taking the time and obeying God. To sit down and do this testimony, where it will get, uh, it will get attention. When I think of the the positive repercussions of this testimony, the witness that I'm getting in my heart is, you know, devil, look out! This is like a snowball. God plow, spoke to me. Trash out of the way. God spoke to me today about this getting attention. You want to hear it? <clears throat> it's funny how we go through things in the world. In the world, when I was in the world, I was on the last day of summer school. And um, my parents were out of town for the week. And I, uh, I was having three or four of my buddies over. And but it's, it's three or four dudes. You call that a party? Three or four dudes? We need some sluts. That we need. So I found some girls that were just out, you know, smoking outside and everything, just talked to them and said, Yeah, you know, you and your friends want to come over. They happen to be at uh, their house. And they started telling people about this party. Just and because it was a strategic location because it was Lakeshore Road. Everybody goes up Lakeshore Road. It was like one house off Lakeshore. So it wasn't very hard to find so everybody starts talking throughout the day Friday night yeah you're going to this party yeah we're going to this party there's like eight or nine ten different parties in town they all failed but somebody at each of them parties said I heard this one out on Lakeshore out by Lakeshore and I ended up with over 1,200 people it was the largest party sorry it's in, the newspaper. It's in the newspaper it's cop cars, damage. Cop cars damaged. damaged it was the big they never had another party that big in the city limits ever again because after that they started sending the fire department there with the big hose <laughs> just, just, just 
nailing everybody, eh? It was the biggest party Sarang had ever had inside. You know, there was like out in the farms and that bigger than that, but it was like, I, it was like everybody was standing on the stairs wall to wall. Everybody's around the pool table. Everybody's sitting on the couches. The bedrooms were all occupied, and then everybody, the living room and the, the whole backyard, people are out screwing in the bushes it's and like everything. A it was just a, Your parents said the carpets were just destroyed, flat, and the grass was like the circus had been there. It was all patty cake flat right down. Biggest thing ever. But the point was, how did it go from three or four dudes to that in that fast? The same reason that this can go somebody with a big mouth gets excited, hears these messages and says, you got to go to this and you got to go to this. And all of a sudden God directs all the hungry people in one direction and the next thing you know, you got a viral attack that's getting spread all over the world. And this is big and important to God because why is divorce why is divorce the Bible says God hates divorce. But why does God hate divorce? Why does he hate divorce? Because he can't get anything done on this earth without agreement and unity. And that is dividing asunder. And when God, and when, when, when we eliminate divorce, and I believe all of us here will have a part to play in eliminating divorce off this planet. When we, del when we eliminate divorce off this planet, w w when it's ab abolished off of, at least out of the body of Christ, we're going to have such unity in the body of Christ, such harmony, such power. Don't stop. We're going to have such power that we're going to be able to believe God for anything and have it come to pass without any difficulties. Because God said, if any two of you, or if any two or, you, two or three of you would agree in my name, why did he say two or three? Because my wife and I could be considered as one. And you agree with my wife and I, that's either two or three. That's two. If my wife and I are one, and you, that's two. But if it's my wife and I and you, and we're all individuals, that's three. That we're all in agreement. If any two or three would be in agreement. It's so important that divorce, it's so important that divorce is no longer on this planet. No longer. God did not put us down here. To suffer from divorce. And when people are taught properly about covenant, they'll never divorce. I could ask Randy, I could ask Patty, I could say, Are you guys married forever, for eternity? Are you best friends for eternity? Is there any possible way Satan can convince you to split up? Nope. Not a chance. 50 years next year. Well, there's not, and, and, and there's no complaints, and there's no reason. There's never going to be a reason because you know your role in God. Randy knows his role in God. And each of you have a role that puts the other one ahead of yourself. You, you help each other and bless each other. Teachings are coming forth in this area so that people are going to be doing right, know how to do it, know what to do right. and stuff. Same as, same as in the area of mortgages. Teaching, like, our testimonies are coming forth. That you don't have to have this debt. big edifice of mortgage hanging over your head. Right. You know, you can buy a car and pay cash. You can do this. and You can do it. And people just need to be taught. They need to learn how to, how. They need, you know what I mean? And they need people to be bold to get out there and tell the testimonies and say, say, don't tell me this won't work. You're too late. It already has. Same with you. You know, don't, somebody says to you, this won't work. <laughs> too late it already has right that's right so after the devil tried to kill me that morning the fellow there was a fellow that came over and he like threw water on me and read the scriptures to me and rebuked the devil and everything and helped keep me alive and it was his wife it was his wife who had called Lorianne up and said whose husband who's your husband now, she would have been armed with the knowledge that I almost died that morning. So she would have been wanting to know, are you praying for Jim? 
because did you know that Jim almost died this morning? Did you know this about Jim almost? He was had a run-in with death this morning? Is that who you're praying for? She doesn't know that. So she said, which one? And Patty got over there and really that's quick. When I, that I, and that's when I said to her, when I got over there, I said to her, well, who does God say your husband is, Lori? She already had the Bible by then. Yeah. She already knew. Yeah. By then I knew. And then so, I so my phone rings. Six o'clock, Wednesday night, May the first, nineteen ninety-one, and I'm, and I, it's her, and she starts talking to me and asking me questions, and I said, "Well, that Deuteronomy twenty-four stuff, that's, that doesn't apply to to us." I said, "That's non-applicable." I said, "I never put you away." Okay. It says if a man put his wife away, and then, you know, and then she goes and bees another wife to somebody else and then if she returns back to him it's an abomination I said well that don't that don't count yeah. I said I never put you away I said I never broke the covenant I right. kept the covenant alive all this right. time and you just said when are you coming home right I wouldn't I wasn't too I put on a little fake dance in front of Phil after I got off the phone but I wasn't really too you know. it happened a long time ago but then, then I hung up the phone, went downstairs. All of a sudden, the other man shows up, opens the door, and says, Got the erection back. I'm ready to go now. And I just <laughs> looked at him. He did not know what went on in the house that day. And let me say this to you. When God said, no man sleep with my wife again or he will die, he's not in the killing business. That's right. you got to understand this. This is why nobody died in this testimony. Nobody was hurt in the filming of this testimony. <laughs> no, nobody died. And the died. names haven't even been changed. No, nobody died because this is the reason the man lost his erection. And the other guy said, get away from me. It was because God created circumstances to protect their lives. That's right. He wasn't trying to kill them. He was just trying to honor this covenant here. That, hey, nobody, the, he honored the covenant between Abraham and Sarah. And even though Abraham and Sarah didn't honor it, because they got that other girl involved. But now, it's different. God's gotten involved in their life. God's involved, if God's involved in your life, things are going to change. That's right. Abram went, Abram, for 24 or 5 years with nothing changing. Then God got in his life. Everything changed. Everything changed. And this is what happened. During those 35 to 40 days, I found out that it, the devil can't sustain 35 days of consistent pressure. Mm -hmm. If you keep pressuring Satan every day, every day, every day, every day, every day, and you don't give him any place with your words, no place with your actions, you just behave, you, you, you submit to God constantly, resist the devil... Don't give in to Satan one iota. He's a compromiser by nature. If you don't quit, he has to. That's right. He's programmed by God to quit and give up. If you don't quit and give up, he does. That's right. The only reason he has it for people, because they wussed out and quit themselves. That's right. Other than that, he would quit every right, time. So don't blame God. Don't blame God. So, yeah. she came back. Here. She came back. And uh, oh, yeah, yeah. May the 1st, May the 2nd, uh, I was having a ball game, and a bunch of people came into town. I don't know if it was you. I don't know how you got out to the farm. But somebody came and got you. And I remember that's where we were, out this area here on that Thursday night. And we were all getting together and praying and worshiping God and stuff. And this one here, says this guy's always thinking about money he says this one here says well you better Jim you better give her some money she's like just basically a, a runaway with no money or nothing she doesn't have anything Jim you better give her some money maybe she wants to go get her hair done or something and I hadn't even thought of that I, oh. that was before I owned the salon yeah it's too <laughs> bad I mean we could have saved myself 150 bucks hold that thought don't lose it on your screen now is the information how to sow seed into this ministry. Go ahead. 
So, <laughs> I took that hundred. I took the hundred and fifty dollars that he told me to give. I wish he would have gave it, but it was it was me that gave it. I, he, he told me to. I just obeyed him. So I gave her the hundred and fifty. Sometimes she, it's just got to be your money, right? Oh yeah. Oh well. Therefore, he doesn't get the he doesn't get blamed for what was about when, to happen. When I bought that ticket for that motorcycle, I was going to just pay for it because I had the money, and the Lord said. No, it's got to be Randy's money. Okay. So I, anyway. So you gave me the money. I gave the money I and went, she turned around and went to a hair salon. A and charged, worldly A worldly hair salon dressing. with worldly music and charged you about 150 almost to, that. to yeah, get your way, hair done. Way back then. Yeah, because I've been back for 33 years now. So anyway, I went to the worldly salon, worldly music, you know, hairdresser, worldly. I'm like my salon. Yeah, they, right. oh, they, you know, it's just pathetic. And I'm sitting there, and this is the devil. I mean, this is embarrassing for me. And she's getting this. all dressed up because we're, I'm picking her up Friday night at 6, and we're going on a date. And this is my first date in 7 years and 8 months, and I'm going... Man, this could be something good. We're going to, I mean, the wheels are turning. Like, let's see where this goes. And let's see, just how smooth of a talker are you? How much can we get out of this? So and anyway, I'm at the salon and I have a vision from hell. But I did not thought know. it was from God. I thought it was from God. I saw a vision. We're doing talking a lot about Abraham here. Of Abraham coming down <laughs> with the knife, the ready to kill Isaac, and God stops him and says, "No, I see your heart. No, I the provide chance. the lamp. Yes, and I see this, and it's like I hear the voice God saying, "You are such a oh, what a woman." You don't have to go back to Jim now. You've passed the test. You've listened. You can go back to the other man. And I thought, oh. You believed it so much you phoned okay. him up. Yeah, I phoned him. And he's like, wow, right on. Oh, wow, oh, right Sounds on. Like on me. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, and I, and then I Death go. Sentence for him. And then he comes for the date and then opens, I open the door and I tell him. I she said, well, tells me the whole thing. I'm going to keep my word because I said I'd go for a date with you, but I am going back to the other man because the Lord showed me I had this vision. And, <laughs> and I'm just standing there, and I'm just standing there going. <laughs> and I'm going, I'm wanting, the like, just like I failed that test on the balcony where I wanted to go down and tell her, don't leave, this is of the devil, you're being deceived. I wanted to do the same thing and say, this is nuts. You're not going back to him. That's wrong. That's totally... I wanted to do that, but I'm just sitting there going... I gotta go. Then I just ran, got in my car, and, uh, and, and just... I knew she didn't want to go out on the date. She was just keeping her word, and I'm thinking, it ain't gonna be no big deal if I break this date. She's just basically not wanting to go anyway so I said I gotta go I went home spent from that time six o'clock till midnight till I went to sleep just worshiping God and getting up my confession sheet because I slacked off two days see moved by a good report I got moved by a good report I got that phone call Wednesday May the 1st and I quit and I let the pressure off the devil yeah for the next 48 hours, and the devil took opportunity. When I took that pressure off, he took opportunity. And he was about ready to steal her back. He's a slippery sucker. So I went back into the war room for the next six hours, and I pounded the living daylights out of him. And pounded him until I went to sleep. Now, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you pray the perfect will of God. And I did a lot of tongue talking in those six hours. And I went to bed thinking, oh, good. Oh, he handled that well. <laughs> he handled that well. He just went home. So I'm in bed thinking, okay, I'm going to wait till everybody else here falls asleep so they don't, you know, question me or I'm going to do what I'm going to do. So uh, I'm going to lay, I'm going to go to sleep. I'll sleep for a couple hours and I'll wake up and then I'll flee. 
So mm -hmm. I had the plan and I did sleep for a couple hours and I'm laying there with my eyes closed, listening, you know, I don't hear kids, I don't hear them. Silent, good time to sneak out. I'm gonna sneak out. I'm laying there, my eyes are still shut. I'm planning which door, what I'm gonna grab, you know, all that stuff. And finally I open up my eyes when I opened up my eyes, my bed was surrounded by angels, warrior angels, swords, gear. Their, their head, their neck was touching the ceiling, completely surrounding my bed. And it scared the hell out of me, literally. And I shut my eyes and went, oh, my, I'm not going to go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God, God, God. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. And that was it. I went back to sleep and I knew, I knew that this, I, you know, phew, the devil left, the deception, see, everything. See, I, see, I, see, uh, 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 you, this is where the Lord's mercy come in again. Because what do you think was going to happen 15 minutes after she left that house? It was going to be the death of that other man. Because he hasn't had anything for a few days, and now he well, says he's got his erection. Yeah. And now he says he's got his erection, and now she's on his way home, home at one in the morning. It's action time, and he would have died. Those angels showed up again to save that guy's life. That was what that was for: to save his life and to keep her from leaving. And and it had had a dual purpose. And how did those angels get there? How those angels get there? That was those six hours. They were ministering spirits sent by me, <laughs> sent by me for six hours of taking this warfare seriously. When I had that, if I would have done all that when you said you got a stay of execution, we wouldn't that this thing wouldn't have drug on so long. Right. If I would have done that back back when I had my stay of execution, I would have had her that. August 1st thing, whatever horse and buggy thing I saw, would have never happened. It would have been restored before then. But, you know, I've had God to learn the hard prospers way. prospers even our mistakes. Well, I've had yeah, to learn the hard way. Yeah. I want you to say that again. You were laying there sleeping. You are prepared to skin out. Yeah. And yeah. you woke up and tell me that. From start there about that. That yeah. part, I'm ready to open up my eyes. I got the plan all figured out. Eyes closed, thinking, escape, everything, everything. Out. And I opened up my eyes, and I saw those angels. I mean, they were, that, it was full. They were completely, compl I think the bed was against the wall, and they were completely guarding. And they were so tall, neck on the ceiling, swords, warrior they were warrior oh, angels they were i wasn't going anywhere and for god to let me see them scared the hell out of me literally and it was like oh my god it scared me so bad i shut my eyes i just couldn't even i couldn't I couldn't even look at him anymore. It's like, oh my God, literally, I'm, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm not going anywhere, God, I'm not going anywhere, I'm not going anywhere. Complete repentance, complete saw, it was deception, everything, just, phew, gone. Anything, is there anything you would question her about or ask her about, about that? What, what further can we pull out of her to describe that, what that was like? That's why I said that's two times I've, you've said it once and I asked for a second one. Is there anything else you can think of or, or should you just say it a third time? This is effective. I can, this is very effective. Oh the yeah. Oh, they right were now, real. People they that are were hearing this right now, real. you can rest assured there's some of them going, <laughs> yeah, well, I, they were I, real. I, I've seen her, listen to her descriptive on this about those angels and they her description is identical to what I saw one day when I was going to work and there was a bunch of them marching in unison around with me. As my left hand went up, their left hand went up. As my right hand went up, left leg, right leg, they were just like harmony with me. Harmony. 
and right in step. and I saw them. And when she described what she saw, I'm thinking she saw the same dudes that I had around me. Oh yeah, the they were dudes. no chubby little Cheer winglets up. and yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, they yeah. were, and it was completely surrounded. There was no way I was gonna get out. It was absolutely. It and, was, and they have dual purpose. They have, the one purpose is to protect things from interfering in the natural realm, but they also have the purpose of keeping devils out in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. They have a dual purpose. They're mm -hmm. taking, they're actually taking on the responsibility of two different realms. Taking you know, hearken diligently unto the voice of God's word coming out of your mouth. If you're praying in the spirit, they're hearkening diligent unto that because you're praying perfectly with God. He said that I heard dual citizenship. Mm. And I thought, well, how does that apply? Well, I know a lot about that because my, heaven dad, and earth. my dad had... Dual. Heaven and earth citizenship. Yeah. In the spirit. That's right. And in That's the right. Mm -hmm. They can affect things there. And, and and I never told this, but we were when we were street witnessing out in California, we were preaching. On, like We had about an hour-long bus ride to get up to downtown. And so we just preached to people. We, we were really cunning we would just we would see somebody sitting on a by the window by themselves we just go and sit beside them they couldn't get out we, we had them right and we just start preaching to them just sit down hey how's it going and start telling them, talking to them and the you Lord. know ever and, since and i'm and i'm doing that and one day we, there was a, my friend and i were together and we saw these two dudes and we we decided to attack them and, and join in and go after them and sit like we would sit in a seat in front of them and then turn around on our knees and then and, you know and start mm -hmm. talking to them and stuff these dudes put us in our place and started preaching to us and i was like wow this guy's telling i can't remember the stuff he said it was just like way out there stuff really good stuff and then they got off the bus and so i went over and look out to see what direction they were going and they just just they vanished in thin air they were two angels. And you know, ever since I've seen them angels, um, it was just a few weeks ago I said something to you about, I, I go out running every day or, you know, early in the morning and it's light, not dark, but there's a lot of uh, addicts and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. <coughs> And, uh, you know, I always believe God and use wisdom and be, you know, submissive to the Lord on my path and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was telling him about something, and then you said to me, do you remember, do you remember those angels around your bed? And I went, oh, God. <laughs> Never forget that. Yeah, and he said, and he said, don't ever forget that. They didn't just come and show up. For that well, moment, just a one time there, they've been there on guard, assigned, protecting you, assigned, assigned to you, it. yeah. So, and it was like, it, you know, I, it's pretty, it's different now when I'm out because I'm so aware. I don't have the little, you know, uh, any fears or anything, and I'm not stupid. You got to be as a wise woman, you know. But it was like, man, I got them. They're with me. They're with, they're Don't life, mess with they're me. They're lifers. They're lifers. So, Touch not God's I, I'm going to say we're going to wrap it up here, but I have this. Uh, uh, it's incomplete because the testimony goes on for the next two years because it took two years. It took two years of warfare before we actually could physically get married again. And we went through a lot of stuff, and I won't get into all of it right now, but the Lord prepared me and trained me. In the arena of sports, I got pre prepared and trained. I got into a battle. You get into a battle of, of two faith people praying for the same thing. And only one of them is going to come out on top. And the Lord put me through that training of that and showed me how to overcome and how to win that. And I needed that training because the people who were praying against me didn't have that training. Plus, do you remember, there's times I've talked to people and I've prayed for people during different situations and they've said to me, God, I could feel the prayers. Have you ever heard people oh, say yeah. that? Oh, yeah. I could yeah, feel yeah. the prayer. And that just blessed me because I I guess I never really thought about that or experienced it or I don't know. But when they say I could feel the prayer, guess what? When I came back to him, I could feel the demonic work of devils and demons 
from people praying their, for me to go back to the other man, to get out of the will of God. And I could feel that in the torment, in the, the garbage. Hey, it, we'll have to get was, into that. Yeah, that's a whole time. different that's thing. That's going to take. Some yeah, time but it's it. just, you know what? Don't be moved by a good report. So we, 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 we got it to the point where she came back. But now we got it. The next time we'll get it to the point where what you got to, if you're, if it's something worth keeping, Satan hasn't died and rolled over. You still got to keep him in his place That's and right. put him where he's supposed to you're be. You're talking Amen. about the warfare. Mm -hmm. In the last three days, like I'm talking about right here, right now, in the last three days, I resisted the devil. I'll say that in Jesus' name. Today, this very day, I almost had to put a gun to my head to do this thing. And now look how it turned out. Mm -hmm.